now. Welcome and good evening to Adventures in DeFi Kingdoms. This is Raf streaming to you live high about the Keeping the Hot Air Balloon. Tonight I have Nindorf with me as always. Nindorf, how you doing? I'm doing well. How about yourself? You know, uh, doing great. We uh, we had a weekend with uh, a lot of you know much needed house projects going on, so that was nice to uh, you know I, I would say a little bit relaxing. I you know a couple of years ago I I started out on an endeavor to do some carpentry projects. And, uh, you know, I, I tell people, you know, I'm an engineer by trade and I sometimes pretend to be a carpenter on weekends. Um, uh-huh. and I, I built a, a table, a dining room table for our family and it has remained unfinished for, and kind of quasi in use for, oh, probably going on a, a few years now. And, uh, we're, we're finally getting around to, all right, let's, let's get it done. Let's finish it off. Um. And so I, I had a chance to use a few different tools, and that's always exciting in the in the wood shop. I uh, I actually joke around a lot with my my boss at work, uh, who's also a, a part time woodworker, and he was telling me about a recent project that he did. And uh, the the funny thing for and any woodworkers out there, or really kind of any project guys out there, would understand. It's like every single actual woodworking project requires at least one, sometimes two, um, efficiency projects. And and so like the, the hilarious part about it is you're uh-huh. always building yourself a jig or you're always building yourself an adaption to, to some kind of tool that you have um, in order to do the next thing. Um, and it's actually a total efficiency waste of time. Like there's so many times <laughs> I wish I would have just gotten started on a project, but I can't do it. It's like the, that's the engineer side of my brain. It's like, well, if I did this, it will make the project 10% easier. And then I spend like twice as much time just researching how to do that. So, uh, that's my, uh, my long winded intro. Uh, nice. how, how was your weekend? Uh, pretty good. You know, similar, some adulting stuff, uh, Snuck a little time in to work on the site too. You know, very similar. Uh, I, I, I had posted in the announcements here, or not in the announcements, but I, you know, hit everyone up. Uh, uh, a guy in our Discord was asking for a feature, and I was like, you know what? This is easier for me to just do in a half hour than to worry about trying to write it down and remember it. So uh, that was a, a fun little feature. Uh, we'll we'll get into some of those site updates maybe in a little bit, but yeah, yeah. it was a good weekend. Yeah, looking forward to those site updates for sure. Um, all right, well, let's go right into question of the day. Sure. So, all right, this is kind of a not a trick question, but uh, how many? How many? Going back to some fantasy here, how many uh, rings did Sauron give to men in the Lord of the Rings? All right, I love the throwback question. And we got we got a few viewers here on YouTube right now. Um, let's just do a, a, a live giveaway. So let's see if Ooh. one of our our five our five viewers know the answer to this question. We'll, we'll oh, somebody's going. We'll have to come up with something thematic here. That's for sure. No doubt. All right. So we have a. I think it's a little bit of a, a delay from. Uh, what do we ask? Oh, we got Mex Mike saying seven. Ooh. That so is... what do we got? We got any other we, we have, coming yeah, in? Yeah, just uh Oh, we got we got Jeremy who I believe um I don't know which Jeremy this was. Uh he's got nine, so He's he's spot on. Worm has three. That's uh, a few less than what we thought. Um, LG Boy has nineteen. All right, so now we're we're pouring in with the numbers here. All right, so Jeremy, um, I believe you won the last. Uh, y- did you win the, uh, the the King Sumo last time? I believe so. That sounds right. Or were you under a, a different alias at at that time? <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. Well, well, Jeremy, hit us up on Discord um, right away, and we'll have to come up with with something that's uh, thematic and and fun. All right. Yeah. Uh, nine nine rings to uh, to rule the mortal men. So why is that an important number there, Nine Dwarf? Well, I mean, a it's you know it's it's part of my handle. I mean, come on now. Nine is the is the most you know that's the leading yeah, character, of course. But uh, no, I, I just asked because apparently nine is the the number of heroes in which it takes to start a war. That, yes. I don't know. Did you check out the <clears throat> new Medium article? I did. I did. And and Max Mac Max Mike is calling us out um, on some clarification here. He said he gave out nineteen in total and kept one, and and you did clarify that it was nine to the men, um, the more so, the race right. the race of men that is. I don't know if there's any females given rings um, in the race of men. Uh, There was in the elves, at least. Uh, But anyways, I digress. All right. um, (laughs) So, yes, that's uh, nine in the the war. So let's go ahead and and just slide, you know, right into one of the topics we have for tonight. Um, The Medium article, which came out yesterday and was just a bit surprising. Um, Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, it just kind of blew up out of nowhere. So I'll go ahead and bring this up. All right. Have it over on on the page now. Uh, So looking at the the dev update, surprise dev update, I really enjoyed it. And I I started reading it as on a walk with the kids. um, And then I was grilling lunch. (laughs) And so, like, I, you know, I I didn't have a, a good chance to digest it until actually today, this morning. Uh, when we started texting about it, um, really excited. So the first thing that they bring up are duels can be fought in groups of one hero, three, or nine heroes, and there are varying levels of rewards for each tier. And so right off the bat, that gets me really excited that they are going to have a tier system. I think you know, had they not had a tier system, it almost would have been un- unplayable ultimately because you can't have you know, your, uh, mythic dragoons just, uh, running havoc on your, your level one basic wizard. So I think that's absolutely the way to go. And I'm really excited about it. So what are your thoughts, uh, initially with, you know, kind of the one, three, nine, nine was news to all of us. So, and, and that was your, your question of the day. So go ahead and hit us with what you're thinking. Yeah. So, you know, it, one and three we'd pretty much seen and i mean we kind of predicted and they've almost been confirmed i guess you would say at this point um and then, you know that makes sense you know solo is you know mano y mano, right let's get the best hero against the best hero um and then squad is sort of the counter to that right one hero cannot max all eight stats um and with three heroes though you can get really close to you can usually max i, I want to say it's almost all eight. Usually, it seems like there's maybe one you can't quite get to or balance right. out. In in what I've seen using the the, the combat corner tool of our website, there it's very go. difficult to get eight balanced. We're gonna have to update heroes. the website now. <laughs> so it was nine, hilarious. Yeah, I scrolled down and I saw nine heroes, and I was like, oh no! I was like, oh, how am I gonna lay that out? Nine's gonna look terrible. I was like, yeah. uh, but we'll get there. Uh, so yeah. And then, you know, I guess I was thinking that they would maybe stick with, you know, the odd series and just go to five. Mm. Uh, Because I think with five heroes, you could still make a pretty good run of it. But then I actually really love nine for a couple of reasons. I think the first reason I love it is that, you know, that gives you a use for a high number of heroes. You know, it's not like, I know for me, and if you know, I've been thinking kind of in squads of three which now they've given it a name so I can call it a squad. Um, But in reality, there's a lot more heroes in my crew that, you know, my roster that don't necessarily fit together well. So I think nine is fantastic, especially for those people who are holding a large number of heroes. I think you're going to be able to do some really cool things with nine. Um, And then I think, imagine once that we know abilities and skills, if those start to play in on a war, Mm -hmm. just think of how much strategy a nine on nine like that's an insane amount of strategy. Yeah, like, I, I don't know. I, I love it. Absolutely love it. Yeah, I'm. I'm looking forward to you know maybe that's a precursor to also like Guild Wars, um, where you can oh, have sure. you know 
many heroes like so you know you myself someone else on our team or on our guild could go up against um you know a, another guild each bringing three heroes i think that'd be that'd be really neat um and then like you said like the the interplay where it just it opens up so many more opportunities um and, and i really i you know can't get over how much i like that they're creating a, a tier system and a ranking system um and so you know that that obviously uh creates a lot of uh parity that ultimately will will form inside those tiers and and the metagame that develops so i'm, I'm really excited about that i think it's going to be really hel- healthy so uh winners of the duels earn raffle tickets which can be used uh to enter multiple raffles hour hourly daily weekly uh, twin prizes so Seems like they're using a raffle system very similar to how they've, you know, uh, doled out lands or Gen Zero heroes based on, uh, you know, X Jewel or, or whatever it is that you hold. So not that surprised by that. Um, also, it, in, but I would say also at the same time encouraged um, as, you know, the uh, the, the current uh, questing system has been um, subject uh, to some criticism um, in terms of the leaderboard. So um really really excited about that and it looks like you can look at you can view replays you can view results so similar things to what's happening in dfk arena and hopefully uh, a lot more balanced what are your thoughts yeah i think that's right i think you're gonna see that especially when they're talking about a matchmaking system i mean honestly that's what arena is kind of missing in my opinion because you you know you get nothing right you just any hero between your your five level um chunk that's all you really get. That's all you know. I mean, I mean, that's a great start. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I, I think it's a really cool thing they've done. And it's, it's you know, I mean, there's thousands of games being played there, uh, you know. But I think matchmaking is going to be absolutely huge. I'm really I'm really curious to know what they're talking about on their rank. Now, I'm you know, is that like a win-loss record? Or is it based on hero data? That's where I... That, that, end of that part of that sentence there really makes me wonder what this is going to be you know because that that's a very different system if it's based on you your you know as a player selecting heroes and winning more often versus having you know uh high level heroes yeah you know what i'm trying to say here yeah it's... yeah for sure and so it, let's uh but let's slide into the next point which has my head spinning you know so we we know that Hubert has come out and very explicitly stated that the hero classes are balanced around combat. And, you know, we know there are, are stats, obviously, for the heroes. We were some of the first to start uncovering the, the hidden data, which, you know, there are abilities there. There's obviously the, the green boost and the blue boost, which we know will impact uh, battling in some way, just like they're impacting the training quest. Uh, but the next piece of information kind of surprised me a bit, and that was heroes will get bonuses based on their elements, card backgrounds, and stats. Well, not the stats part was not surprising, but the elements and card backgrounds. So I believe the backgrounds are like plains, forest, swamp, whatever, you know, the, the city. I can't remember what they all are. And then elements are like, you know, the wind, fire, water, whatever they have on their card as well. Um, and so, you know, my head started spinning thinking like I was already trying to, you know, balance five, you know, L- uh, variables in this equation. And now we have to balance even more. So that's, I don't know, that that, that seems kind of crazy. What are your thoughts there? Yeah, and I think that's I think you nailed it when you talked about Hubert mentioning it in the past. And I think that that's what's going to keep this game running long term is that it's going to be so difficult because there are so many elements on a card mm-hmm. that to get all of them in sync in the lineup is going to be near impossible. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you com- combine that with the fact that it could be a squad or a war of nine heroes. So now trying to find nine heroes they complement the right ways. I don't know. This this is setting up for yeah. some really high strategy. I, I absolutely love it. Yeah, I, I love it too. And, you know, we actually, just the last podcast on Wednesday, after they released the roadmap, I remember us saying, 
you know, actually stating some concern that if they're only going to release duels before that, um, you know, unlocking of jewels starts to happen. I know both you and I have been talking about this for a while that we were worried about the, the economy of the game, you know, ultimately right. crashing. Um, but if this is what is included inside duels, I mean, this is far more complex than what I was expecting. I mean, this is, I mean, this feels almost like full battle. So, you know, a, a battle with, I, I assume the, the gambit system style battling is still the next iteration. That's not going to happen here when the release of duels happen, which is at the end of Q2. So, you know, we have now a a month and a week left. So it's, there's not a lot of time for this to come out. Like get ready, start prepping your squads, folks. That's right. Yeah. How dare we get too pessimistic? That's all I got to (laughs) say. Yeah. They'll show us. Yeah. I would say, yeah, it's it's funny. Like, try to I, sometimes I try to watch the the discourse in other places, and you know, I I think we we definitely trend on the optimistic side of things, but that's probably our nature more than anything. Yeah, All right. absolutely. So, anything else on on battling that you want to hit up, or as I, uh, you know, let's maybe throw that question out to our our listeners yeah. over on YouTube. Any yeah, uh, can... anything else, YouTube friends? Yeah, while they're while they're you know you have a chance to hear and respond, I think I'm extremely interested in that the the page you know where it's got the cards. You know, it, it's, it really seems like it's going to make a selection. It's going to be a roll. Pick a hero from each team. You know, that's mm-hmm. roll number one. Roll number two. Let's pick a stat. Roll number three. Let's pick a, a you know a location. Number four. Let's pick a, an element. And then boom. Now let's throw all your combinations of data and who's got the the more correlated to the random role yeah. for that turn. I, I think it's going to be great. Um, the, you know, and I love that little, uh, I don't know if you have that page up by chance. I do. But little, I do like, actually. At the bottom where it's got the different uh, El- elemental elements, chart. Like, yeah. Oh, something's going to happen there. And I think it's going to be pretty sweet. Yeah. I think it might, you know, randomly roll. All right. Water's powerful for the next three turns. So, yep. You know, use a, a water hero. I, I'm what I'm really hoping, and you know, long term listeners know that I fan up competitive Pokemon. Never any good at it, but uh, still enjoyed it. You know, one of the things I I love most about that, and it's very much a turn based game. Uh, but you had the opportunity to always switch out your your current active battling Pokemon, or in this case, a hero, uh, to bring in someone else. I really hope that that opportunity exists. And you essentially, you give up a a turn. And so when you decide to switch out your Pokemon, the other Pokemon gets a, a, in essence, a free attack on the incoming Pokemon. But the, you know, it's, it's all, it's all strategy play because you can bring a guy from your reserves or from your bench who is resistant to the elemental water attack or is resistant to the thief or the archer that's currently attacking. Um, and so it adds so much strategy when you're able to bring someone else into the game. And then eventually, you know, if people start switching heroes often, in this case, you know, you would start planning your next attack around, are they going to switch? Are they not going to switch? Do I want to preempt their switch and try to switch oh, nice. into who I think they're going to bring in? Um, and so there's, you know, so many layers of strategy, counter strategy, counter counter strategy that I, I hope can exist with a game that's turn-based. Um, I, I think it can. And, you know, based on the images we're seeing already, it's more complex than we hope uh, or hoped a couple weeks ago. So I'm pretty excited about that now. Oh, yeah, 100 percent. All right. So Sergeant Filthy McNasty, do you speculate that the pages play a role in the DFK duel? So I believe you're referring to uh, eternal story pages of the tome, something or other like that. Um what are your thoughts, Nindorf? Um, I personally don't think so. I think it's probably going to be related to, you know, you know, well, I guess I don't know, but I, I would like to see it related to some element of um, entry into a specific tournament, maybe. 
So I guess in that sense, maybe then it is kind of related uh, if the tournament uses the dual system, I suppose. But I, I kind of like to think that that's for some special event from what we've heard. Uh, whereas the dual system, I think, is just kind of going to be a feature that's going to be live out there, you know, that can be used whenever. So I, I guess, yeah, so sort of related, but I think not necessarily directly. Yeah, that's my thought. I guess, uh, embarrassingly enough, it takes me long enough to click through my gardeners that I haven't actually bothered to read all the pages. <laughs> so, uh. Uh, I can't <laughs> tell you. I can't tell you what the heck the quest is. Um, I, I don't know. You guys <laughs> tell us. Um, yeah, maybe I like, <laughs> like I said jokingly, but in reality, I don't know what the what it's saying in the pages. So uh, maybe I'll go. That'll be my homework for the night, Sergeant. Uh, so, so thanks for that. All right. Well, uh, next statement slash question from Space Waffles. Uh, you know, one of our our best friends in in college. Uh, well, still best friends. Had a dog named Waffles. So, like the name. Oh yeah, that's funny. Uh, Space Waffles. Not sure it's been mentioned, but did we talk about Frisky saying that? Hope you have your eggs ready for Wednesday. I assume this means this upcoming Wednesday. I have not seen that. Have you seen that? I missed it, but I think that makes sense because, you know, with their last, one of their last releases, they said they were shifting to a, you know, kind of a two-week cycle, yeah. which follows, you know, somewhat of an agile development process that I'm kind of used to as well. But, um, you know, and obviously last week there was no release. So that kind of leads us to hype that there's going to be a large release. And so if someone else heard out there here mention wednesday i think you know that's you know two points saying that get ready to start incubating some eggs on wednesday all right well so here i've uh, gone down to uh, the pets update um on the uh, the page if you're following along nine dwarf um and i have this up for our youtube viewers so jarek is getting ready to hatch some eggs and i'm looking at the image of the the egg incubator right now um, yep. So currently it's showing that you can incubate blue or gray and the other egg colors are locked. And I I feel like they dropped a whole bunch of information here. Again, like, I mean, the amount of information that they packed into this single medium article was incredible from a development standpoint. Like they really are, uh, you know, taking their, their mantra of market up, build market sideways build market down build um so i'll uh, i'll do some quick reading here so pets come in a variety of shapes and sizes rarity will play a role in what kind of pet you can find which i absolutely love and uh there are rare variants inside those pets and i also believe that there is rarity to you know the boosts that they provide as well so pet bonuses can have three rarity tiers uh, common, rare, and mythic. And so they've kind of simplified the rarity system a little bit. Uh, the chance of getting a higher rarity bonus is tied to a higher rarity pet. So um, are you at, I don't know, how many are you up to now? Is it one, 200, 300 pets or eggs? Uh, I'm not sure. I, I, I lost track. Yeah, so there was a bit of a run in the marketplace the other day where gold eggs were going for quite a discount so i ended up picking up my second gold egg uh just bought that one so that that brought me up to 25 so i'm 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 sitting pretty good you know i, I so i bought two gold eggs and otherwise i've got the other 23 that i've found through good old-fashioned questing 25 that is insane i'm pretty sure i'm at somewhere like 15 um, <laughs> Yeah, three, four, nine, eleven, fourteen. Um, yeah. So, huh. all right. Well, hey, you definitely got me beat there. So twenty five. That holy cow. That's right. Are you sending many? Um, are you doing? Are you focusing on training quests, or right now are you focused more on uh, the profession quests? So let's see. I think I have about three or four fishermen and three or four foragers a piece. And then I got my 12 man mining crew. Uh, and then let's see, then the rest of my heroes, which is probably another only like 
six or so are doing training quests. So I think I'm, I'm proud of, I'm, you know, about half of my heroes, almost not quite half are, are mining. And then I've got another half of that left over. So yeah, I'm pretty well split. Actually, the more I think about it, I, I got a pretty good mix going at the moment. And my personal cutoff is I will do professions until I have a skill that's 30 or above with the boost. Oh, okay. But that's just kind of where I'm at. Higher standard than mine. Um, I'm, I'm going more off of the profession score. And so if I'm above 10, which would make you eligible for level 10 profession quest, then I am uh-huh. not actually doing well. It, it depends. Um, if the hero is a, a stinky commoner, you know, then I'll continue to have him do the profession quest. Um, but anyone who's 10 and above and they have a, a, I would say for me, my threshold has been about more like 20. Um, and okay. then I'll go ahead and, you know, go over to the training quest if they have 20 and also high profession score with the exception of right now, I'm trying to power level my Dragoon. Um, oh, which sure. I'm actually doing up on uh, YouTube right now. And so I am a stamp potting uh, my, what I had a, a level one Dragoon earlier today. And as I, uh, I sent you a text message picture, I was lamenting that uh, I got a bit rugged on my first level up. <laughs> um, I, oh man, I still feel a little sick to my stomach. Anyways, we're getting way off topic. Uh, <laughs> pets, <laughs> pets coming our way. Nine Narf has 100 eggs. And actually, <laughs> once we get to 300 subscribers in YouTube, we're going to do some pet egg giveaways. And I actually, you know, I got a gray egg today. I got a green egg like earlier in, well, uh, last week. Um, and You're so, you know, up. maybe instead of giving away two eggs, maybe we'll give away three eggs. Uh, I'm really excited about this. And uh, I, as we teased last time, we're trying to line up a very special um, pet release podcast uh, for this week. I haven't heard from Sun Bear yet if, you know, we have any takers, but... Uh, we're trying to get some DFK team members on board, and and hopefully we could, you know, maybe even get funded a few extra eggs that we can give away to our amazing listeners out there. Nice, yeah. I just want to note that at the moment we're sitting at 292 YouTube subscribers, so Excellent. we're not all that far away. Oh, perfect timing! It's just like we planned it, right? You bet. All right, so um, obviously the caveats that gray and blue eggs will only be first on the launch. Um, you know, they're working on the art is what they said. Uh, second, pet bonuses will be set to placeholders until the respective features are closer to launch. In the case of profession bonuses, the wait will not be long. They are planned to be implemented along the release of level 10 fishing and foraging quests. For all bonuses that contain a placeholder, you will be able to see the rarity and type of bonus, combat, profession, crafting, etc. that the pet has, but no details of what the bonus actually does. Here's a sneak peek at some bonuses available. Increased chance of finding runes, increased experience gains, extra item rolls, skill improvements. So, I just rambled for way too long. What What sticks out to you most about that? Obviously... Increased experience gains are going to be absolute gold mines for oh, people. Yeah. Those are going to go for a premium. If you get one of those, boys, sit tight on it because that thing's going to be worth something real. Um, skill improvements, I want to say that that must, I, I kind of, it has to be like if the pet is quote unquote applied or in youth, probably just get, you know, and a couple extra stat points or something. Um, Extra item rolls. See, that seems very useful. Yeah. If you say you're short on bloaters, you're like, well, I better set my pet out that have, gives me extra rolls so I can really rake in the bloaters, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. Um, and then finding runes. Like, basically, that one kind of just tells me that they're coming up with all sorts of crazy ideas, that these things are going to have just an absolute gobs of opportunities for random things that these pets are going to come out with. I think it'll be minute details, and I think that's probably where they're they're really smart in withholding some of the details because I would bet that most of those aren't planned. They're basically blank slates in the pet card, uh, and they can kind of assign those out as they come up with uses for them. Is, is my suspicion, mm-hmm. and I'm I'm actually totally cool with that because otherwise, you know, you don't want to get to end game 
before you're actually able to hatch a pet. So I think I, I really like what they're doing here. You know, there's a wide diversity of things that they've got on this list and, and, and more is, yeah, no doubt. They're going to take this everywhere, every which way they can. Yeah. And I, I thought I, I heard this on, I think it was like climb cryptos, uh, YouTube channel that, uh, he was, you know, complimenting the team that like, he was pretty sure that, um, and I, I don't know what kind of inside information he might've had, or maybe he's just speculating. I'm not sure. Um, but that pets were never a part of the original vision of, and I haven't gone back to actually look at the old roadmaps, um, but that sounds right to me. And so I, I think that. it's it's interesting that they're, you know, it, it feels like they're, you know, embracing this and, and really building a whole bunch of new functionality. Um, so, so next, I actually love this feature here. It, you know, it's kind of like a built-in burn mechanic. Um, where there will be a trade-in mechanic, they're calling it, where you can put two unwanted pets up for adoption um, in exchange that the town folk will take over, and you can get a new egg. Um, and so I actually think that this is a, a neat feature that, you know, they're trying to maintain pet rarity, in essence, uh, when you're looking at a, a, a two-to-one trade. So... Uh, what are your what are your thoughts on this? I I'll admit when I read this the uh, the first time when I was you know doing a walk and grilling I totally glossed over it and the second time that it really hit home with me. Oh, sorry, I was mesmerized by the star kid here. That thing is really fun to watch. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you, you know, I I think what they're doing here is they're trialing burn mechanisms for heroes oh, yeah. in a much lesser valuable well at least at the moment much less valuable token so i think this is going to let them kind of have some lessons learned on um, you know let's see what happens maybe the maybe their mechanics they originally come out with are too forgiving and so everybody's don't you know trading in all their pets until and there's only mythic ones left and, you know then they can kind of you know pivot and make it you know maybe it's four to one or something so i think I think this is a good opportunity for them to kind of get their feet wet and burn mechanics. So I think they're taking a, a really good approach here and starting with pets because, you know, they're, they're valuable, but they're still of limited value. And I think, you know, they should theoretically, a pet should never have, you know, an immense more value than the hero, at least of a similar rarity, right? You would think because heroes are like the mainstay of the game. I would, I would hope a pet is never worth more, a mythic pet's never worth more than a mythic hero, but I guess, you know, we'll see. Yeah. And I, I agree. And I, I also like that, you know, a, a constant burn mechanic, um, helps you maintain that rarity as more community members are getting into the game and, uh, you know, doing more quests, summoning heroes, which ultimately do more quests. Um, so I'm I'm really excited about it, and I I agree with you that I I hope that pets also aren't like the the premier NFT. I I hope they continue to focus on heroes, and just like you said, I I also hope that this is like previewing more burn mechanics for heroes. I think that's that's important. Um, yeah, I we'll see. Well, and it it makes me wonder too, you know, what does it look like to apply or use a pet, right? Like, I think, and I ask this question because in the future it's going to matter. If we're crafting weapons and armor, you know, something else I haven't really heard a lot about. You know, looking at the heroes, do any of them hold shields? I don't think they do. Like, shields are usually a pretty huge thing. Um, and maybe it's just that we're seeing the default, you know, free, if you will, like crappy weapons that all these heroes are summoned with. Mm -hmm. And once you get crafting and you start to craft really high level or high grade equipment, you know, those are going to have to get applied to a hero somehow. And so, you know, I'm really curious to see if we can gleam any of that information from these pets once they are usable, you know, how are they applied basically, you know, and, and we've kind of talked about this before, um, you know, with our discussions on travel, you know, that's another thing that we don't really know how that's going to work on chain. So this is yet another area where I'm really curious as kind of a data guy, you know, as the, as the engineer behind the scenes trying to look at all that data. I really want to know and I'm excited to see how they pull all this off. 
I agree. Yeah. Looking forward to it. And I, I'm hoping we can, maybe it's it's probably a bit of a stretch if it's happening Wednesday, but um, get some access to how the data's working because I think that'll be, you know, a, another opportunity for the site to, you know, really share and unlock some of that hidden data. All right. Well, um, that about finishes it up on the the pets conversation. Um, we so we covered pets and duels, and the last conversation topic I had for the night was bots. Um, you know, I know you you were promoting. Um, there's another developer who's who's working on a bot, um, and you promoted something on Discord the other day. Maybe let's give that a a quick shout out now. Um, and then we'll jump into it. Hopefully have him on uh, a future podcast. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we've got a guy that, uh, I've, he's kind of been a mainstay, uh, in the dev discord channel. Um, and I, I, I'm probably going to pronounce it wrong because I'm terrible at names on discord, but it's like Dan Polis. Uh, and I'm not sure if that's right. You know, so someone scream at me. On, on YouTube if they know better. But basically he's, you know, I've been in contact with him for a little while now and he's released, it's a it's a pretty useful little bot for kind of just quality of life if you have a lot of heroes to manage and you're just doing like say a bunch of profession quests. Uh, and it really helps you make sure that those all get run in a timely manner. And, you know, it's, it's kind of one of those things that, you know, when we were starting out, you know, a few months back, I never really thought I would have that problem. But you know, when you got 30 heroes, even at 30, it still takes a lot of time to click all the buttons. Uh, so, you know, it's a tool that really helps with that. Um, I'm not doing it justice. You know, we want to get him on. He'll, he'll help us, you know, work through and talk over all the details. But it's pretty cool what he's got uh, running. Um, he, and it does do the actual transactions for you with your account. Something that I haven't gotten into. So, you know, I'd love to pick his brain on, you know, what are all the trials and tribulations he's gone through in that? Because I've heard it, it can be quite a pain on Harmony. So look, keep, you know, stay tuned, everyone. We'll, we'll see if we can't get some time scheduled with him here for one of our next podcasts. Yeah, really looking forward to that. And um, hopefully I'll be the uh, the dummy test subject here coming up as well to, to give this a shot and see if I can't figure out how to, you know, use a tool like this. And, you know, I... I can see how that provides a ton of value, especially if they don't, you know, it's been in the works forever, but like, when can you make slightly more efficient gardening quests? Like I have a lot of gardeners. Um, and that, that is just, it's, it's a ton of work and ton of clicks to go through that. So I'm really looking forward to, you know, whether it's some in-game tools or some third party tools to help me manage it better. Yeah, you're right. Those gardeners, because you gotta you gotta service those guys almost every four hours. Yeah. Whereas like fishing and foraging, you, you kind of get them once every eight, and you're pretty well set. That's a good point. Yeah. All right. Well, um, let's give our YouTubers one last chance here. Any uh, final questions uh, before we we take off? Yeah, I think while we're waiting for that to come up, maybe we could just chat real quick about the. Uh, the market page that we just launched on oh, our website. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. So I, I kind of, I took a little time to put together um, what I call just the market data app. And it, it basically stems from the, the most recent vote I had done on our discord community. That was the number two, you know, voted item. I'd already completed the first. Uh, and so now I yeah, am moving on to a page with DFK token price data. Um, and I think what is pretty cool is for our, our paid subscribers, we've got, you know, some, it does a little bit more analysis and it can tell you, hey, is it cheaper to craft this or is it cheaper to buy it? And I was actually surprised on the answers for some of those. It's, it's not always cheaper to craft. Sometimes it is actually cheaper just to go to that trader and, and swap out for some jewel. So it kind of helps with that. Um, it also kind of shows you all the recipes, I call them, for either alchemy or the stone carver. Um, so as new facets of the game come out, namely probably crafting and whatnot, you know, you'll see more and more pages kind of show up there to go over all those different recipes. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys find it useful. Um, it's, I tried to double check some of the data, but it's kind of a lot. And so, you know, Hey, listeners out there, if you find a problem, you know, we'll, we'll let you guys help be our, uh, our 
beta testers here. If you find a bug and we'll fix it up, we will we'll shoot you a month of uh, extra content. So free on us. So we appreciate all the help you guys provide. Yeah, love it. And, you know, speaking of kind of the, the quality assurance of things, as we are, are trying to release more information, you know, I think one of the things that we've talked about is it is challenging as this is our, our side gig, not our day job. And and by us, I really mean Neindorf. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, let's make make no jokes about it. You're doing a lot of the back end, most all of the back end development work. So um, we're kind of looking for someone who could help us with uh, QA, uh, quality assurance. And, you know, we got to rush things out when they release is, you know, the gist of where I'm going with this. And so it is really challenging when we don't get to build ahead of time. Uh, you know, Saturday, we knew that pets were coming out and we're speculating that they're coming out Wednesday, but we don't really know. And we have no idea how they're going to show up in the, um, you know, in, in ultimately the, the blockchain data for DFK. So, you know, how does the inter- the API interface with the data that they have? And, you know, how do we look at the rarity of pets? Um, all those things like are giant question marks to us. And if they release on Wednesday, you know, that's 72 hours from now. So um, we would like to get our content out there faster. And so we're, we're looking for someone uh, to join uh, you know, kind of lightly join the team and in that stretch, they get to, you know, help us perform QA. And so if you're someone who wants access to things early on, but it might be broken, then <laughs> give us a call, uh, reach out to us on discord. Yeah. Well said. I mean, you know, when we had only a few subscribers or maybe back way back in the early days and it was just, uh, Walton and I and you, Raph, we, uh, I would just push stuff out and I'd be like, Hey, te- they'll tell me if it's broke. It. Yeah. <laughs> but now, you know, we've, I think we've reached a point where I feel a little bit more, you know, beholden to all of our subscribers and our paid users that I want to have a quality product. So, you know, well, I think this is, you know, it's probably about time we have some sort of position like this to help us look over everything. So, so yep. Yep. Let us know. Yeah, for sure. All right, let me uh, jump over to YouTube here real quick, see if there's any uh, questions. Are pets forever hero linked? Um, I've wondered about this myself. I've not heard anything about it, so I don't think so. But I almost kind of hope that they would be so that it makes it a really hard choice and you need to think it over very carefully uh kind of like in some games items will be hero linked right mm-hmm. or you know like once you use it it's it's forever bound to that 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 character so i don't think that we i can't say for sure that they will and they more than likely will not but i personally kind of would love to see it i think it would make it, it would make this you know, yet one step harder and i think in a game like this anytime they make it harder for people to, to you know maximize or is is better in the long run yeah i yeah i i agree with that we'll we'll have to see i i don't know where that'll end up um what's uh i assume he means dfk it's dfl what's uh dfk stance on questing thoughts uh oh yeah the, the next question or next comment down was dfk correction um so I would say, I, I I don't know, you've been on the dev page more than me. I think they realize that they can't fight it. It's going to happen with the blockchain. I think there's a lot more grief around uh, purchase bots um, on the tavern than there are about questing bots. But I guess, what are your thoughts? So, yeah, my read of it would be they understand that they're going to exist and they would they would prefer instead to use methods that get people to play um, where you have to play that a bot maybe isn't as useful. Um, And maybe duels will be that point. Yeah, I could see their leaderboards like abandoning quest rewards and going only to, you know, dual rewards. Right, because you you have to have an element of strategy involved where you're going to pick and match and choose that becomes a lot harder to do as a bot than simply, you know, hitting start quest, complete quest. So I, I think their current stance is that, you know, we understand bots exist. Um, they're, 
They definitely are opposed to bots that are trying to exploit things in the contract that weren't really meant to be there or weren't, I shouldn't, should say maybe as public, um, that aren't really usable through the game interface. I think that's where they start to maybe draw that line. Mm -hmm. Um, But I I think that, honestly, they're right. The the difference between a game, you know, launching transactions and a bot launching transactions, especially for profession questing, uh, you know, I... There's no way I think they would ever come at somebody for, you know, this is wild speculation, not financial advice, but the, they understand that that's got to happen. If you're a, a wallet holding 100 heroes or more, you those whales just, they're not clicking those buttons. Yeah. It's, that's impossible. And, you know, maybe a way that they'll combat this in the future, they have hinted towards some kind of scholarship program. Um, and so, you know, maybe they'll make the the scholarship rewards juicy in a way that, you know, you would rather do a, perform a scholarship than you would, uh, you know, have a bot do your rewards. I don't know how they could do that, but, um, you know, they've always said that they want that to be a reality. Uh, so next question here, uh, or comment, uh, Rivetto said, Mr. Zipper mentioned saving bloaters in regards to feeding pets. Wasn't sure if he was serious, but dot, dot, dot. And, you know, that's something that actually... You you got some information from Tango uh, back when you were in ETH Denver, right? Kind of confirming yeah, yeah, he, this. That's right. Yeah, he he dropped that way back then. That you know maybe pets are going to need to eat, and I don't know. Bloaters look kind of tasty, or I think or something like that. He'd said it was pretty funny. But right. yeah, I I was I couldn't wait to get on a podcast that night and be like, hey, you know what? Pets might eat bloaters, and I was like, <laughs> uh, so yeah. yeah, it might actually be coming true. Now, we don't know what they're going to need, you know, what they would use food for. Maybe they need to recharge just kind of like your hero has to rebuild stamina. I mean, that's my wild speculation for the night is that a pet might be tired or, you know, exhausted, has to eat. Until they eat a bloater. (laughs) Yep. Uh, A monster energy drink is a a bloater drink in (laughs) in DeFi Kingdoms. Bloater and ragweed, yum. Yeah. Um, so JHW3D said, I wonder if 9v9 duels will drive up the hero market since most people would be wanting to have at least nine heroes. Um, I, I could see that a little bit and, and maybe even if they introduce some kind of death mechanic, uh, for like, you know, super serious duels, something like that, where it's like, you're not training, you're, you're doing a gladiatorial duel. There's a, a chance that your hero dies. Um, yeah, I, I think it that that would be that would be healthy to drive the the demand for hero market. I I think um, you know kind of it, it's almost like two layers deep. Uh, the way I think about heroes, um, one that the the summoning mechanic for heroes is one of the most important mechanics in the entire game, and you know I've I've wondered before like sixty jewels if you own two Gen zeros like that's a lot. That's really expensive. Um, but those jewels currently fund a lot of the, the marketing, the quest fund, um, and then ultimately get get burned or repurposed in a, in a really healthy way and take those jewels out of circulation. And so um, I think that summoning is such a – it's such an important mechanic to the game because of the, the transfer jewel that it performs. Now – I think somehow they have to figure out how to balance, and this is where why they get paid the big bucks, not me. Um, but they somehow have to balance, you know, finding that the reward for the people who are summoning uh, that ends up benefiting the game, uh, but also control the supply of heroes, which you know will will decrease that reward over time if there's a greater supply in heroes, and that it's going to drive the price down. So it. That's a, a really complex mechanism that, I mean, maybe it's rendered obsolete in, in battles if they could charge or burn jewel um, or take some of, like, you know, if, if you did a duel, uh, 1v1, it takes 0.2 jewels and, you know, 0.1 is burned. The other 0.1 jewels go to, you know, one third marketing fund, one third quest fund, one third, I don't know, whatever else, uh, pay for the devs time. So, um, I don't know. I rambled on there for a while, but 
I, I think that uh, yeah, burning mechanics are going to be really important if this game is going to be a mainstay. Yep. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And yeah, how the economy runs its cycles is is, is marquee to the success of honestly any game like this. And so, you know, we know that they they've got their I don't know, pretty much probably an economist at this level um, working on the team to help basically try to predict what these features that they release are going to do um, so that it that we as the community kind of help steer the prices in a way that's healthy. I won't say steer them in a particular direction. I'll just say steer them in a way that's healthy. And so that's kind of why I'm almost wondering if they did have a burn mechanic, if you would see, um, I think you'll continue to see rewards in items and maybe you'll start to see it less in terms of straight up jewel or crystal because those are such, you know, precious to the environment right. and to the quest fund. I don't know that they could give away many jewel from a burn mechanic. Now, if they were giving away maybe gold or, you know, runes, I think that is not as detrimental to the jewel economy or the quest fund. Mm -hmm. So I, that's kind of my personal opinion is I think that you're going to see items over currency. Yeah. And I, you know, probably layering or creating layers makes it a more healthy economic environment too so no doubt um seahawk says can't wait to see the two of you battle i i agree and then you know we we're going to hold some kind of tournament uh once duels release and you know we're not i kind of thought about doing it in uh dfk arena but because you can't schedule you can't schedule personal battles it just it doesn't make any sense. So I'm looking right. forward to it. We're going to host some kind of tournament, 64 player tournament on, uh, on discord. So stay tuned for that. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Absolutely. Yeah. And so, yeah, Seahawk also asks, you know, when guild tourneys, I, you know, we're not going to wait. We're going to kind of organize our own guild tourneys and, um, uh, <laughs> hopefully we can, you know, drum up some excitement and fun for that. All right. Well, we've uh, we've chatted for a while now, so I think that's a that's a good place to end. Uh, Nindorf, any uh, last comments here? Uh, basically, I'm just going to kind of reiterate a little bit. You know, like we said, that this Wednesday is probably going to be huge. So, you know, stay tuned, everybody. It'll probably be you know here in the Midwest. It's probably going to be late, like it usually is. So. I'm hoping Thursday morning to wake up to some really interesting and cool news. Right on, right on. Maybe we'll move our, our Wednesday pod to Thursday, just in anticipation of it being a big release. There you go. Good call. All right. Well, um, you know, let's beat the YouTube algorithm. Hit that like button. Um, please drop us some subscribes. We're almost there to the 300 mark, and we'll be giving away some eggs. So I think that'd be really neat if we could time that with the next podcast. So uh, thanks for for uh, checking in, and uh, and thanks if, if you're live, and also thank you for uh, tuning in after the fact. So have a good night.